Welcome once again to Rowan series on medical biology. Today we are going to be dealing with DNA replication. DNA replication. At the end of this lecture, we are to know the definition of a DNA replication, the mechanism of replication, the leading and the lagging strand, and other modes of replication. And I want you to also remember some enzymes during the replication stage. We have what we call the helicase, the SSB proteins, the DNA gyrase, the primase, DNA polymerase, and then DNA ligase. So what then is DNA replication? DNA replication is simply the process whereby DNA makes exact copy of itself during cell division. It produces two identical cells. It occurs in every individual, hence it forms the basis for biological inheritance. How then is DNA replicated? This brings us to what we call the mechanism of replication. Now, before DNA can be replicated, this double helix structure of DNA must unwind itself or it must unzip itself. How does it do this? It does this with the help of an enzyme called helicase. So helicase unzips the parental DNA. It unzips the parental DNA. And the place whereby this is occurring, we call it the origin of replication. So this place, we will name it as the origin of replication. And as you can see, this has created a Y-shaped structure. Hence, we call it the replication fork. The replication fork. Exactly. Now, back to helicase. This helicase breaks the nitrogenous basis or the complementary basis that is existing in the DNA strand. And again, DNA gyrus also comes in to help the helicase to function more effectively. How does it help? It introduces negative supercoils to reduce the stress of unwinding. Again, naturally, naturally, the DNA strands love to come together. We call it re-annealing. They love to re-anneal together. But we have an enzyme or a protein called the SSB protein. That is single stranded binding proteins. This binds to the, to the strands of DNA molecule. One strand on top, the other strand below it. To stabilize the unwound parental DNA. So it stabilizes it to prevent it from coming together. So that it can be free for our replication to take place. So that's the next step. The fourth step that I'll bring to mind is how DNA is now replicated on this strand and then on the other strand. Now, there is an enzyme or a protein called primase. This primase introduces a set of nucleotides and we call that nucleotide primer. So this here is called a primer. So, this primer sets the whole replication in this strand in motion. It sets the whole of this. So, this one is our, our primer by primers. It sets this whole thing in motion for replication to take place or for the DNA polymerase. Now, DNA polymerase is our beloved friend who comes in to add the other nucleotides to it in order to make this replication complete. Now, you must know that DNA polymerase, DNA polymerase, this is the enzyme that helps us. DNA polymerase moves in the 5 to 3 direction. It moves in the 5 to 3 direction. That means it synthesizes from this direction toward that direction. And because it is synthesized in this direction, we call it the forward direction the forward direction 
it is also what continuous and this is what we call the leading strand so when you are asked what is a leading strand a leading strand is simply the strand of dna where replication takes place in a forward direction and in a continuous fashion simple as that now the other strand we call it the lagging strand and I'll explain to you what a lagging strand really mean in a moment. Again, there's no way we can start a replication without premise coming to play. By introducing what we call what premise to set the whole thing in motion. But look at over here. This is three prime, and that's what five prime. We have already established that DNA polymerase only works in the what in the five to three direction that means replication must actually begin from here and move in that direction and that is what a backward direction this is what forward direction that is a what a backward direction and because it is in a backward direction it cannot move continuously it will synthesize break synthesize break synthesize break synthesize break so we call this one the lagging strand or the discontinuous strand in the backward direction. Now, our primer or the primase forms small, small primers on top of it. Actually, it's complementary. They form it. So that's it. So these are our what? Primers by primers. Now, after every primer, don't forget DNA polymerase must what? Synthesize the next few nucleotides. And that is it. After a primer, nucleotide comes in. DNA polymerase. Primer, DNA polymerase comes in. Primer, DNA polymerase. And so on and so forth. Now, these individual nucleotides formed or complementary pairs formed by the DNA polymerase we call these pieces or this fragment, the Okazaki fragment. The Okazaki fragment. So Okazaki fragment, fragment are simply the set of nucleotides that are formed on the lagging strand. Now, we are not looking for a structure with primates on top. So, I mean, with primates on top. That means these primers must be removed they must be removed and we have an enzyme that can help us that enzyme or protein is called RNAs don't forget a primer is an RNA take note RNA not DNA the DNA is the one that is formed by the DNA polymerase so take note so this enzyme will remove the primers and an enzyme will come and then join so this primer is removed it must be joined here removed joined removed joined but it doesn't just happen like that there's an enzyme that has to do this that enzyme is called the DNA ligase DNA ligase so DNA ligase simply joins the Okazaki fragment together in order to have a continuous strand. So this whole thing is occurring in the lagging strand. And now, over here, these are other forms or other modes of what replication. I've already established that what we have just done is called what, the semi-conservative. But let me cut it over here with diagrams to help us understand it better now this is a parental strand parental strand of dna molecule now during replication it produces what two daughter cells now you notice that a portion of the parental strand is found in the new synthesized uh, molecule or dna structure hence we call it the semi-conservative mode of what 
replication or form of replication and this is the one that is mostly used or that must be found in living organisms now we have another type we call it the conservative why because the newly synthesized daughter cells one takes the exact copy of the parental DNA whilst the other takes a completely new copy as you can see here completely new copy and then this is from the original copy so we call it conservative now we have what we call the dispersive form dispersive meaning it's scattered the daughter cells are just scattered anyhow or somehow so this is the parental strand or the parent strand so look at the daughter cells a portion of parent a portion of new original new original new so we call it what the dispersed form they also have another type which i didn't show by diagram we call it the non-conservative here the original dna is completely destroyed in the course of synthesis of the two daughter cells so there's no choice about that but the new one you can never what find the original copy the two strands that have been produced are completely new so basically this brings us to the end of dna replication mm -hmm.